Hi, and welcome to the Legacy Lost Radio and Music Paradise Show. And today we're going to do a uh, quick overview of uh, a diamond antenna for a handheld. And uh, concerning the, uh, you can look through my playlist, I do have some band demos I did as a musician years ago. Um, due to my health issues and other circumstances, I really don't play out much anymore live or record at the moment. Uh, I used to have a lot of guitars and stuff I was going to do reviews on. Different guitars like an Epiphone, Casino, Ibanez, Gem, uh, a Squire Strat that had a... Uh, but anyway, so on and so forth, a uh, Mahogany Strat, um, a Steinberger Spirit. had a bunch of different guitars, but this particular quick overview, we're just going to go over a quick... Uh, I ordered this through uh, Amazon. It's a Diamond SRH... 77 CA. This is uh, a genuine diamond antenna. There go about uh, this is $27 also through Amazon. Um, I don't go on eBay or buy uh, generic Chinese antennas. Uh, I try to get the real thing. Costs a little more initially, but it's worth it. Um, two meters, 70 centimeter for receiving and transmitting 120 150 300 megahertz 450 800 900 megahertz bands receiving antenna um 2.15 db on 70 centimeter max power rating is 10 watts length is 40 centimeter weight 38 grams sma mail connector quarter wavelength on two meter and a half wavelength Radialist on uh, 70 centimeter 8 band coverage. And, uh, come with a little, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not in the package, a little uh, spacer as well. And I have two radios that I bought this for um, that it fits on. And um, I would like to get a dual band uh, VHF, uh, a multi band handheld radio next. But, um, I have a couple mobiles and whatnot for that, but, um, well, the Balfangs do that too, sorry, but, uh, I mean the name brand, but, um, here's the antenna, and I'll, uh, unscrew this, and this is, uh, a TYT MD380, they come stock with two antennas, here's the, uh, shorter the one that's probably used the most. I'm in a fringe area. I'm, I'm south of Daytona, um, west east of Orlando. I'm north of Titusville, Cocoa, uh, Brevard County. So there's no really repeaters for DMR within like a 10-mile range, 5-10 mile range. So I'm on the fringe. So with the handheld, it's kind of tricky getting into it. Um, there's a couple of sites. If you go to Tom's Radio Room show, he uh, does a DMR show. He has a couple links. Um, there's like a log, the show that uh, there's a site that logs the transmissions, the time, the repeater used, and the DB. And it's kind of interesting to see. A lot of people with the zero, of course, they're on the open shark or, uh, you know, they're on their Wi Fi. So they're kind of cheating. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a good way to do it, but it's uh, I, I'm more of a, I, I want to get it through the antenna. I don't want to, might as well just talk on the internet and Skype if, uh, you know, why have a radio. I'm, I'm a little more old school in that sense, so. Anyway, um, Diamond Antenna SRH77CA, about 15 inches long. It's got the male connector, so this won't work on a, like a UV5R, or uh, you'd have to get the other. There's a couple versions of this. There's a BNC connector version also. There's an SMA female connector for like your Balfang, UV5R, the 82, HP, whatever, so on and so forth. But it does fit this radio here, because this has the uh, female connector on the top. And then also, it fits my F250 Yaesu radio. And this is a little stock antenna. This is a 2 meter only. But um, this is kind of a helical coil antenna, and now it, this this does fit over the the nut here, and it's got a nice sheath, and everything goes over that, keeps it you know from getting corrosion and stuff in there. But 
you know, a uh, quarter wavelength on VHF or so is, for two meters, around 19 inches or so, uh, you know, minus the coil, and this is definitely not 19 inches, so it's definitely a compromise. Um, now, that being said, the better brand than tent radios like the ASU ICOM, TYT is kind of a cheap one. The better brand than antenna, even the stock antennas, are better than, like, say, a uh, Baofeng cheap antenna. So you know you you get you do get a little bit better quality with a uh, brand name radio stock antenna than with a Chinese uh, you know inexpensive radio. But anyway, this um, also threads on to this Yesu F two fifty R. Just threads on down there like that. Now note there is very very slight gap here on the Yesu. Right here, there's a slight gap, and it doesn't cover the nut here, the sheath. It doesn't it doesn't cover that? Doesn't encapsulate that, as the word would say. And uh, so this this goes over that. It's a little bit a little bit bigger and like that. So uh, this is you know it's an aftermarket antenna. It's designed to pretty much finish fit everything, but it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect fit on many radios. You know it's. Uh, but the, the uh, transmit and receive is really good on it. And it does make a difference versus this. Um, I did a, uh, a couple weather channels and uh, did a side by side. And it does pick up a little better on this. And um, you'll probably, from what I'm seeing, it benefit most on UHF. It's got a little more gain on UHF because, you know, it's a higher frequency. So it's got more... Uh, but um, now this TYT MD380 definitely needs all the gain I can get to get in and out of the repeater since the distance. So let me put that on here. Yeah, we got local. Some of these are PTT. Now I think there's like a 10 minute timer on some of these. I'm not sure what talk groups are all involved in it. Sometimes it's good. Um, some of these repeaters you have to transmit into it in order to open the gateway so you can hear. It's kind of interesting. I've seen a video on it before. But I'll just click that real quick. You can see that it went in. I'll do the statewide. You can hear the, the, the noise. And what I'm going to do, you can see the green light. When it transmits the green, that means you're getting into it. Um, if you go where you can't get into it all click a couple times beep flash at you and then it uh, makes like a uh, noise that's for another time um, also I enabled the top button I press it for a long pass and it does a scan you can see the scan function on here where there's like a play button the blue and the red shield means unsecured connection the blue and yellow if you get that as a secure connection you can change it on the settings in the radio um, but I just leave it usually the way it is. I'm still kind of a newbie to this. Well, not newbie, but I'm, I'm getting there. But um, anyway, um, this is a good uh, antenna. And I do talk on the KJ4 OVA repeater. is the only one I can really get into down here in southeast Fallujah County. And even there, it's kind of scratchy. Um, fringe area. Um, most of my friends and I that I know we're on, will talk on the local um talk group um there are other ones worldwide but uh i only have a friend or two that's uh that i know that's licensed elsewhere in different countries so i really don't use the worldwide um north america is kind of fun um basically with this you want to go on the, the the group that's the most local to you and the contact you're trying to reach is just uh kind of the courtesy thing you know you don't want to key up worldwide to talk to your neighbor basically it's just a uh, you know keep uh, the repeater for uh, what it's intended use is the best practice I, I would assume uh, not everybody does that but that's what I would do um, now if you're in Florida or uh, like I'm going to try to get a hold of my friend we talked the other day in Jacksonville and he's a semi driver and uh, he also is a uh, Skywarn and a uh, what do you call it um, amateur general we talked via um we talked via his repeater up in Jacksonville where he was staying a night in the truck stop near uh, Jacksonville. I was talking to him on the Florida statewide. And um, 
So that's how you do that, basically. If you say if he was in Georgia, and you got a tri-state or southeast regional, and that state's involved, then you can go on to that one. And then if, say, he goes up to Texas or, you know, somewhere further away, like Oklahoma or something, he's out in the Midwest, you go to uh, North America, and uh, so on and so forth. So anyway, beside that DMR, um, this does make a difference. This is probably... Uh, for the money, the, this is one of the more expensive but trusted names. Um, I, I love the Diamond name. I have no problem with their uh, products. Highly recommend it. And again, this isn't 100% perfect fit on all the radios. I mean, it's you know, you might have a gap or a little thing. It's not going to be, you know, exactly like the factory uh, interface with it. But, it'll, you know, the performance gains outweigh the, you know, the inconvenience. So pretty much, I'm going to... Unless I'm going somewhere and I need the portability, this is going to be uh, married to this radio, I call it, this uh, MFJ. I mean, the uh, <laughs> Diamond antenna is going to be married to this TYT, because I need all the gain I can get. But if I'm going somewhere from closer to a repeater, I'll just use this. It's a lot more convenient. And uh, and now, also, don't forget, I don't, I haven't, I'd already put it away, but there's a long antenna that comes with this radio, and it's about an inch shorter than the uh, Diamond. And it's a higher gain antenna than and it comes with the TYT MD380. And, uh, but this is a little bit longer, and I just trust that uh, it's, uh, this is built a little bit uh, better. So anyway, um, I definitely recommend these. Um, tr they're tried, true, and tested. Again, there's three versions. This is the version with the SMA male style that fits the TYT MD380 and my Yaesu F2, uh, FT250. R, I think they call that. So anyway, um, I hope that uh, if you do get a radio, I would highly recommend one of these. And uh, you really can't go wrong with it. And uh, they have shorter ones, thinner ones, fatter ones, telescopic ones. But uh, I think overall this is uh, um, a decent. Now the only thing too, this this makes it a little when you when you, you can wiggle it a little bit and it puts a little load on the connector and everything, and it can't tip your radio over if you you know you go by that. So uh, you know, there, there's a downside on having this. Um, I don't like to bend or fold antennas too far. You know, it puts a strain on. I don't like to put any kind of strain on a connector if I can help it. It's just common sense. So, um, I like this. So, anyway, um, for $27 or whatever, it's uh, well worth it. Um, Diamond products are excellent, and I highly recommend getting one for your handheld. Um, it's dual band, so, and then for receive. Oh, and it also works good for a weather band antenna. Works excellent for trains, uh, rail fans, uh, military air is not even that bad. Works okay for VHF air. Um, you know, so it's pretty versatile for what it is. It's a, you know, been around a while and uh, a lot of people love them. So, uh, but anyway, this is just a UHF radio, but uh, this is where I'm at. This needs all the help I can get in uh, for digital, and uh, so that's what I'm going to use for it. So, uh, go get you one and uh, try it out. I think you'd be very happy. Peace. Give us a uh, thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. Have a great day, 73.